Hello and welcome to Soldering the Cocker Spaniel. Uh, this is a continuation from the Cocker Spaniel project I've been working on. And I'm going to show you today how I solder it together. I got my iron out here on the wrist at. A Hacko 456 iron with a quarter inch chisel tip bit and I'm using it on a rheostat. I set it about 75 to 80 on the rheostat out of 100. Um, so it's at like 75 to 80 uh, percent. That's just where I'm comfortable at uh, for soldering. I got my paste flux. So I'm going to go ahead and flux my seams. I also got my 60 40 solder. my seams with my paste flux. I may have to add some more in time, but I'm going to go ahead and do some tack soldering just so I don't have things move around on me. rheostat up and down or your thermostat on your iron to get it to melt either faster or slower. I may have to turn it down a little bit. Black glass seems to hold heat uh, more so than other glass, like less dense glass. I think it's because black is just so dense of a glass. It does tend to hold the heat in. I'm just looking for a smooth bead of solder. I'm trying to run it down through there. And get these details. The trick is to keep the least amount of solder that you can on some of these thinner lines. And you're going to have some bumps on your textured glass. It just the way it goes. It's not going to lay completely flat on all the textured. More solder out. Gonna dip it. I want to leave this these details for last. I'm just gonna solder the pieces together because I want a flat pupil. So I usually do those last. I let the glass completely cool before I do those. much of it in one spot. I'm going to get 
get those nostrils after I'm completely finished with soldering both sides of the project. Get all the seams first. a little bit. Take a little from there and just draw this down the side of this dog's face. There. Smooth out the lines and touch up the seam or the intersections a little bit. And at this point I'm gonna finish up over here and then I'm gonna pull these pins so I can get to these other seams down here at the bottom. That ran off a little bit. That's okay. So I'm going to clean that up later when I bead the edges. Dip this one more time. Pull this out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull this pin. Tap it, make sure it's not too hot before you pull it because these are aluminum headed pins. And they will get very hot if you touch the iron to them. Outside edges. So we're pull these pins out. Flux around the edges. solder on your iron tip you're going to end up with a lot of running and globbiness and if that happens that's okay you can just pick it up and move it after you're done you can always use that to tin the your edges and to bead your edges you get too much on there, you can always roll it off onto your paper and pick it up later. I got this little cardboard piece off to the side over here that I'm picking up solder off of. When I get too much solder, you can actually, if you get too much solder on your tip, you can kind of gently kind of drip it off the end of it without flicking it everywhere. Because <laughs> that's not good. Don't want flying molten solder. Make 
sure this is cool enough to pick up. Yeah. Turn over. And I usually start out by tinning my whole outside edge, then working around my seams. So I'm going to go ahead and do that quick. Side edge is tinned. Go ahead and start working on my seams. I'm gonna have to flex this whole thing. I'm going to put my hangers over in here. Maybe I'll do that right now. I'm gonna lay down just a little tack through here because I'm gonna put my hangers in here. That way you can blend them into the back side of my seam, back side of my seams. And I use a pair of jewelry pliers that you can get at Hobby Lobby. They're just ring making pliers, round pliers. They have little increments on them. And I'm just going to go ahead and use those and some wire cutters. They're down inside here. Take those out. Okay. My wire cutters. I'm going to make those, I'm going to bury those down in here. So a lot of people use jump rings on the edge of the foil and they just set them on there and they, they foil them to the edge. The problem with that is that it's all the weight of the sun catcher is hanging on the edge of this foil, which is a really weak point on this, on this uh, sun catcher. It's much better to embed some wire down into the seam with a ring on the end of it. That way it's not just pulling here, it's pulling here on these, this whole length of seam there. You can put jump rings on on lighter pieces but and get away with it, but when you are working with a little heavier piece like this, you're going to need to put some strength in there for it to hold up. I'm putting that on a 7 and just kind of Wrapping that around. Okay. And I'm going to lay it right down in there. So I'm going to cut it right about there. There's my first one. I'm going to gently bend that around a little bit. Turn my piece this direction so I can hold this jump ring with my pliers. You cannot hold the jump ring with your fingers. They really pick up the heat and it will burn you. So I always hold it with the pliers and then I lay it right down there. I'm going to have to pick up some solder. the solder. Gently touch it, pick just a little bit up. I'm just going to lay that down on that seam. Kind of solder it in place. Like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill back over that seam from there. It embeds that really nicely and you don't even hardly know it's, there's an extra wire in there. Makes your hangers much stronger. I learned this over time. I didn't know this right away but we always use jump rings and they were great but for the bigger pieces definitely want to do this. I even do this on my smaller pieces now just as an added precaution that it doesn't rip the foil off the edge of my sun catchers. Now I'm going to do that with the other side. I'm going to put that down in here. And I'm going to bring this out over here a little bit farther. 
because this little thing here, that way when I hang my piece, I got a one going up this way and then I'll have one coming up this way and it'll come out just a little bit farther. This is where design comes in. If I had a really thought, if I just sat and thought about it just a little bit longer, I probably would have added another seam right here. Just kind of waved that in here so I could hang this above this little lip instead of below it. And I probably would have come down from here and kind of went through this way and swooped it through and then made this all one piece. Or just added this extra piece in here and made this another piece. That's the fun thing when you're designing. You can do whatever you want when you're designing your own pattern patterns, but you do have to think about structural integrity and how to seam the glass so that it doesn't uh, give any weak points because that weight's going to be pulling on here. And this over time. If it was a heavier piece, a bigger piece, this would be a stress point right here for sure um, in this piece right here because it's pulling on this part of the glass. So there will be some stress in here, but it's wide enough that I think it'll be okay. I am using 18 gauge tinned copper wire. It's already pre-tinned, so you don't have to tin it. It's much easier for me to work with and tinning is a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's kind of a pain to tin. Yeah, it's going to have to be flipped this direction. I'm going to have to bend that out. I am not very good with wire work. That's not my forte. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I'm learning more about wire work every day. I know some people that are just fantastic and they can wrap all kinds of stones and make beautiful jewelry with wire and I'm just not that person. <laughs> at least not yet. Hope to someday. This way. Yeah, I think that is a ticket right there. I'm going to bend that out just a little bit. I want it to lay in there nicely and not... Be gentle. A little bend. There we go. Not yet went too far with it. Now I'm going to bend it back. Just trying to follow the seam there. that into place right here. Again, I'm going to pick up some solder. Drop that down. Edges there. There. Now I got that built right into my seams. Hangers are attached. 
ahead and flux all my seams. I'm going to stop and flux all my seams, let my glass cool down. Okay, I got my seams all fluxed. Go ahead and uh, dip this in the solder. I should dip the solder in the flux. <laughs> going to dip the solder in the flux and go ahead and run this seams along here. And sometimes the more you play with it, the worse it gets. <laughs> there are days, there are days when everything just doesn't go right. And you just have to quit for the day. You're know, like, nope, it's not going right. Everything's grinding wrong. You're breaking pieces of glass. Solder's running everywhere. And you just have to call it a day. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and bead the edges now. I use a glove protect my hands from running solder. Definitely don't want a solder BB to melt in your skin. <laughs> Not a fun thing to have happen. I've had it happen once and that was the last time that I solder without gloves on when I'm beating. I do solder without gloves on for the main part of the soldering, but this beading part, when you're holding this, it's too easy for solder to run off of this. It's way too easy. <laughs>
back side and just make sure my where my seams touch my edges are all laying flat. I got a couple. Just right here where they meet the edge. Just touch it. Just melt the very edge of that. They look smooth and there's no need to do this. But if there's a little bit like here, I need to add a little bit of solder. Smooth that in a little bit. In here, just a little tiny bit of solder. Touching up, make sure that everything's laying flat and there's no big bumps or any spots that aren't missing or needing more solder. Just inspecting all my seams. Now I'm going to get ready to to do my pupils and my nose. I'm going to go ahead and do the nose first. But I'm going to go ahead and flux this. I hadn't fluxed this before. So I didn't want the solder to run in there. Anything that you flux, the solder is going to run and stick to. If you don't want the solder to run, don't add flux yet. So I want to flux this. So the solder will run in to the pupil area of my overlay. Let's clean this off for a second. And we're going to go ahead and just put some solder in here on the nostril. Flow it right into there. same thing. Pull that solder right in, pull it back into the seam, and voila! Got the dog's nose, nostrils. eyes. Lay some solder down. This is going to get real hot real fast. So I'm just going to try to lay it down as best I can. As quick as possible. Let's set up. Just kind of blend it into the, the rest of the eye here. And you're going to get little indentations. It's just the way the solder lays. Same thing over here. Get that going. I'm going to use a flat part of my iron to melt that quickly. And just blow it right into the seam here. Okay, I'm going to let that cool a second. I don't want to blow it out into the back side of my glass. Because that glass gets hot real fast with all that hot solder on there. Melt that one more time. Melt it down. Let it flow in there. Just like that. I'll let that just kind of dry out right there. Dry out. Cool off and set up. And I'm going to hit that seam just to make sure there's no odd lumps or bumps in there. I'll let that cool and then I'm gonna turn it over just to make sure that the solder didn't run through on the other side and my seams are still intact over on the back side because that, that always gets real hot. That's why I always leave that to last. Then I'm gonna wash this up with some Dawn dish soap and some nice warm water scrub it with a soft bristle brush and clean all that flux off. Clean and clean the solder and get 
as much of the impurities off of it as possible so the patina will take real well. And I'm going to go ahead and patina this black. And I think I might just do a short video on that separate from this one because this one's gotten rather long. On that note, thank you for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel for more uh, videos like this and our other adventures. And uh, ring that bell. That way you'll know when stuff gets posted. <laughs>